I mean, that's All right, I mean. we're live. Okay. Elizabeth. Um, I just wanted to say that right. if you wanted it to be n equals 1, because that's kind of neater, it's in the same yes. format, then it would be n, n minus 1. one Very good. Very good. So I do want you guys to have this memorized, this, because e can be expressed as a limit, as Becky was going to say, or as a, the sum of, um, of terms, which is crazy, right? It doesn't look anything like that. How is that? I don't know. Crazy stuff. So now you guys have six convergence tests. Maybe now it's starting to pinch a little bit. We have two more to go. And then it starts to get haywire. Okay, now it's the, the going gets tough right now. So now um, all these tests require something in common. What is it? The, oh, who is that? Was that your mom? That was. Was it? Noah. Noah. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Noah. These all require that your general term is positive always for the domain. Now this one, it's not required. Okay? You can take the limit. But now, we're going to use, we're going to develop um, kind of, an, we're going to look at an alternating series where you do have negative terms and how you can deal with that. So, can you fix this? This should say alternating series. So an alternating series looks like this. You're going to have, so it's A, your first term. If it's positive, then the second term has to be negative. And then your third term has to be positive. Fourth term. OK, it's inherent in the name that it alternates. Or the first term could be negative, and then you have positive, right? But just do a quick shout out is that an alternating series? No, no. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You got that? <laughs> say no more, say no more. All right, am I not being obvious? Please. This only works when it goes positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Alternating. So if you what have you a... Can, what if you made like a rule to combine the plus, plus terms? Like, like, like a telescoping back. series? Well, if you found, yeah. You well, you still have, like, the idea is you plug in one and you get your first term into the a, you know, a sub n. So, I mean, we can talk about it, but... but you couldn't make a term like, like, this like has n to be times n plus n. 1 or something? N. This is a1, that's got to be a2, that's going to be a3, that's going to be a4. Okay. So, now there's another way to get alternating... Ooh, you know, if you can think about it. Besides this negative 1 to the n minus 1, this should say n equals 1. You could also have negative 1 to the n power, right? Then your first term would be negative. What's another way to have an alternating positive negative, positive negative, with your domain being um, the natural, the integers? Uh, George? Um, so you have sinusoidal. Yes. Ooh, so good. You can be so, so smart. You totally deserve a smarty. Like, uh, what would it look like though? Cosine of. Go, Amir. Yes. Give you a smarty too. Right? Because when n is 1, cosine is 1 pi. Oh, that's negative 1. When n is 2, you got 2, two pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. Yeah, it works. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. Just checking. I'm like, wait, is that right? Yeah. Phew. Good. So that's lovely. So you might want to make a note. You just have to have something that generates ones and negative ones. Ones and negative ones. And sinusoidal was a great way for that to, to work. So now we're going to talk about the um, alternating um, harmonic series. Now you guys know, and I hope you feel confident to say that the harmonic series, what does it do? Diverges. I hope you have that memorized. Because it's weird, it's, and I think it's very close. I mean, it's like right on the cusp, right? If you have n to the 1.1 power, that's going to converge. But this, without that, diverges. Guess what? When we introduce this, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to converge. Because we're adding a chunk. Like I add one, and then I subtract a half. So I'm going backwards. I'm making my, sm my sum smaller. And then I add, oops, then I add a number that's smaller than what I just took. And then I go backwards. 
and then I add a number smaller than the distance I just went, and then I go backwards. So you walk for every one step forward you go, you're going a little bit back, right? And you go forward, and then you go, so you subtract. Yeah, that's most yeah. What's that? <laughs> so um, can you guys right now do these? And I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator. Do you guys know how to do this on your calculator? No. If you want. Now, obviously, S sub 1 is Do you need a calculator one. for a family? Right. I don't know what to think about it. 1 minus a half, that's easy. One half plus a third half. I was going to make you do it now. I'm doing because I can't help myself. Five six. Okay, you can do the rest because they're nasty fractions. To do it on your calculator to check your work, you have to use the list, which is second stat. All right, that's second stat. And the syntax is very specific. Like when you program, syntax is very specific. So you find a stat button. Right here. Uh, yeah, got it. Okay, it's like to the left of the left arrow. <laughs> and then you do list, and then it's math, I think. Uh, under there, you get SUM. Is it under math? Yeah. Is it number five? Yeah. I'm so smart, huh? <laughs> sometimes. Uh, sometimes, yeah, not. sometimes. Sometimes. Always sometimes. Not. I'm sure about sums. Sometimes. <laughs> you made me so happy, Alex. You made me so happy. All right, so you do some, and then guess what? You have to do list ops. I know this is annoying to get sequence because you're going to sum up terms in a sequence. You're saying sum up the terms of the sequence, and then you get a default parenthesis, and then you have to do your general term, whatever it is, but use X's. I mean, there is a setting to get ends. Do you see the end there? We don't need it. You see that there's an end? Did you ever think about that? Yeah. Did you use that last year? Cool, right? But we're just going to use, just define it as some f of x. Then you have to say what your variable is. That's for harder math. x. And then you um, need to start at 1 and say what your n is. How high up do you want to go? So Infinity. Yeah, you can't. You can't do that. Do so it would look like this. Entire series. Um, maybe like if you want to do the harmonic, you would do one over x, comma. The comma button is here. How do you get into the sequence? List, um, ops. list ops. X one to a hundred, and that will sum up the first hundred terms of the harmonic. What? It's just one comma one hundred. Yeah. And then if you want, you can, I, I think you can put a one, like you're going up by ones. I think you need that, actually. Yeah, you need, you need a go, this is like increments of one. So you might want to write that down somewhere because it's kind of hard to remember. It's really hidden, isn't it? So you have to use the list math and list Ops buttons, and then the, the syntax is so precise. But I get the same number regardless <coughs> of the one. I think it defaults at one, I think. But How do you get the little i? Hmm? How do you get the i? Get the, the That's a one. Oh. Yeah. So can you guys fill this in for me? Can you? How am I getting the number? Looks like you <laughs> yeah, for this one, you're going to have to use this. Don't copy what I have. You have to do the negative the 1 to the n minus 1 power. Don't copy this. <laughs> That's just the harmonic. Right. Yeah, you got to copy this one. Um, this is what I got. Tell me if you agree with me. It's five out. Did you guys get those? Um, so you can see. You add and then you 
your value decreases, and then your value increases for S3, and for S4, you're going back a little bit. S5, you're increasing. For S6, you're going back a little bit, right? So if we graph that, well, we're starting big at one, the, the normal harmonic series keeps going. This one backtracks. So this is S1, now I'm here, S2. And now I'm, so you, you can see how this goes, right? Like, and then back, and then back, and then back, okay? Yeah, question? Do you have something to like the times negative one half to the n or something? You could say, say it again, what is it? Is not if you just have a function that's not to the negative one, but to another negative number to okay. the n power, you can factor out. Yeah, sometimes you can do that for a geometric series because the, the absolute value of the ratio has to be less than one. So you can have a geometric series with a negative ratio, right? But you can also have a non-geometric series that's not negative one. Yeah. Okay, so now, let's see. So here is the, um, you don't have to write this out. I have this out for you on your notes. <clears throat> now, I think an easy way to think about this is consider this whole thing to be a sub n. That's the general term. But guess what happens, kids? We are going to really focus on this so much that I'm going to give it a different name. I'm going to call that b sub n. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so I'm going to say this is the general term. That's a sub n. We've always used that. But now, to use this test, we disregard the negative 1 to the k power, or whatever, to the n power. We're just going to evaluate this um, little piece here. Okay. And we're going to disregard that oscillating 1, negative 1. Does that make sense? So what we're going to do is, given something where we have an oscillating 1, negative 1, times some rule. We're going to look at it. Now, I would tell you to do this is a little bit out of order. I would make this number one. You are going to kind of do a little bit of a divergence test, but you're not going to do a divergence test on the whole piece, just on this B sub n. So I might want you to say, use the divergence test, but do the limit as n goes to infinity of the B sub n. Because we can't take the limit of this. There is no limit if you oscillate, because then the odd and even terms don't um, have the same limit. So we're just going to do this, which is in our, in our you know, abilities. And if it equals 0, then you can proceed. If it doesn't equal 0, stop. But we're not going to use this test to prove that. This test only is going to prove convergence. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get more into it next class, if that's okay. So we're only going to use this to prove convergence, yes? So just in what they wrote, um, their B of N is AK and yeah. their A of N is AK. Yeah. So you can proceed, and I would do that first because that's so easy to do, right? And then you have to show that your, I would do this second, B of N is always greater than zero. And if, you know, your domain's positive numbers, so that should be, you don't have to do anything to prove that. If it's like 1 over n, check. 1 over n squared, check. Now, it can be eventually, like, like if I had something like this, um, n minus 5 over um, n squared. What's the whole proceed yeah. thing? Where do you proceed with? Proceed on to step 2. I'm okay. going backwards. Okay. So the first few terms are negative. This will still work. All right, but you're not going to see examples like that for now. Let's just say all the terms are greater than zero. And now the third step, which is probably the hardest, this is like the integral test where we have to, you know, prove it's decreasing. All right, the best way to do that is take the derivative, make sure it's always a negative. Or if it's obvious, like 1 over n squared, that's obvious to me. You don't have to take it. Take, you know, do calculus on that if you don't want to. <laughs> I mean, because obviously as n gets bigger, this gets Does smaller. Does it have to always, like, could, it be like, could it be like it's not always 
decreasing, but then once you get to like eight of seven. It yeah, this can all be eventually decreasing as well. Okay. Yeah, and this one is okay. So yeah, no, on the AP test, I would say be rigorous. You'll yeah. have enough time. So remember, to do calculus, we have to convert the ends to what? X. X. So you guys remember, if you're gonna do, if you're gonna take the derivative. Please don't take the derivative. I, I marked you on your quizzes. Take the derivative, change a sub n to f of x. This is discrete. We can't do calculus on discrete input. So you are going to say, this is the pattern. I'm going to use this to gauge the pattern. You cannot do calculus on a sub n. Illegal. Okay? Illegal. Go into math jail. It's out there, and it's a cold, ugly place. I'll send you. Have I ever sent anyone in here there? Yes. No, uh, where is it? Oh, did I send you to the math jail? You have. Me? What did you do? You said it, but you never Remember, he said she's in the math jail. Oh, you, you've like talked the talk so many times. <laughs> 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 I threatened you. You've never gone through it, then. All right. So. <laughs> you said Cody Tipton? Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. I bet he did. <laughs> I'm sure. All right. So, um, what am I going to do now? Okay. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to go off this. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to do an example at the end of the lesson. All right. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, so we don't have any tests right now that w would work for um, uh, a series that's negative. That's not a possibility. Yeah, you might be able to use a teles like make turn it into a telescoping series. <laughs> yep. Yeah, not yet. Next class. All right. Um, so now. Yeah. We're not. No, we're not factoring out a negative. We're just focusing on the rule, and not focusing on the alternating part. If you had like, if you had like a series of like, because you say a, like, a sub n is greater than zero, and just like a negative to one point, you can pull out remarks of this from the. Can you make a note of it, and we'll talk because I don't want to do it while I'm on tape. Is that okay? Please make a note so I don't forget. Okay. So now, um, okay, so here's the, here's the story. Um, alternating series are actually very powerful. Um, you guys saw how we can define E as a series. Guess what? <coughs> we can define cosine, sine, tangent, and natural log as alternating series. Uh, alternating series. Not E. E doesn't alternate. Right? It's positive over in factorial. Sine, cosine, tangent, and therefore secant, cosecant, cotangent, and, um, and natural law, we define as alternating series. So if you guys are rocket scientists, which you could all be someday, right, and you say, I want to send um, my, my lab experiment off into the galaxy, you know that it takes tons and tons of energy to get out of the gravitational pull of the Earth, right? And then they use this, you guys learned about this, where they use a slingshot effect of um, the gravity of other planets, you know, like you, you have Earth and you send off a rocket, you know this? So then, you know, you, you come to, yeah, yeah. so you come to like Jupiter and you have to plan this, these guys are so smart, right? So you, what happens is it gets caught in the gravitational pull of Jupiter and then gets swung and thrown, boom. And you got to hit that perfectly. And they do. They actually do this because there's not enough power. You know, you, you know, so space is a vacuum, but but still, you need that. You know, an object. Well, I'm not so much physics all of a sudden. An object in motion wants to stay in motion, right? But do these guys like triple check each other's work. Yes. Like, yes. Not, yes. Even, like, not even triple. But you know, you need to know. Like, tell me in a second. But you need to know. I need to predict this angle using cosine to within a ten thousandth of a degree accuracy. Let's say. No good. So you're going to use alternating series to guarantee that your cosine is as accurate as you need it. You don't trust a calculator. You okay. guarantee the precision of your cal your cosine estimate using this test, which I'm going to show you in just a second. Yeah, Minjay has a question uh, or so comment. Or just all the triple checking work thing. Yes. There was a spaceship for me that just failed. Like they set something up, but it ended up like not going up and like exploding because they forgot what to change the metrics. Oh, yes. Yeah. Challenge? Yes. Are you Doesn't serious? Doesn't your dad do like serious? Yeah, no, he, he's a biochemist, is he? No, he's 
No, he doesn't. No. Your dad's a rocket scientist. <laughs> he, he does his work on the scrap paper from his house. I'm like, what is this? It's like so Why have you gorgeous, been to his technical house? hard. You've been to his house? No, he turns in his homework from scrap paper from his house. This is all getting filmed, by the way. Go ahead. <laughs> I just wondered, like, someone forgot to put a dash over something. Like so it like was they thought it was a precise rounded value instead yeah, of repeating. Yeah, they wanted they had to like self destruct it when it. Oh. And we're talking billions of dollars. Yeah. Like it's a big deal. People make math mistakes not just in a classroom, right? It's crazy. Happens I mean, to the best of us, would you say? <laughs> happens to the best of us. <laughs> All right. So now, um, I need to like the concept here. Amir, you said this so well. You know, Amir said to me before class started last week, he said, I think about this geometrically and it really helps me to remember these things. And I 100% agree, and that's how I'm gonna think about this, um, the finding the sum of an alternating series. All right, so we're gonna use the harmonic series that I just, and I'm gonna turn this stuff. So the alternating harmonic series. Let me turn this stuff off. I'm not gonna use this anymore. I'm gonna turn the light on. Yeah, I'm still filming. <laughs> yeah, this is an example in your packet, but I'm going to just kind of go off, go off script a little bit. <laughs> so um, can you guys just remind me S1 equals 1? And then what do we add? So this is 1 half, and A2 was negative 1 half, right? Yeah, yes. So S3, what is that? 5, 6, thank you. And we added 1 third. S4. Can you guys write these in your notes, please, somewhere? Uh, what's S4? 7 twelfths. 7 12. twelfths. And we added, subtracted the fourth. S. I think this will do us. What's? Do you want to get it as a fraction? Did you get it? 47 sixtieths. 47 sixtieths. Good. How, like, Oopsie. what number does your calculator do? What do you mean? No. <laughs> All right, so. You know, we did this plus that to get to this, that plus that to get to that, right? So now think about what's happening. I got a big old number line, and I'm going to make it 1. So this is my S1. What do I, where do I go from this? I told you I go backwards, right? So I'm going to go back a half. That's my A sub 1 term. And I end up here at S2. Now what do I add? One third. One third. And I get my S3. And then I go backwards, right? And I get my S4. OK, watch this, you guys. This what? will help. Then I go, do I ever exceed S3? If I if I add the next term, am I going to go past S3? No. Am I going to go past S1? No. It's smaller. Yeah. This is decreasing. So the distance of my next, the A term that I add, is less than this. You agree with me? Yes. So think about that. So I'm going to add a distance that's less than this. That's my A5. One more than this to get my S5. I'm going to subtract. subtract. Am I going to exceed my S4? Why would you? No. Here's my S6, my A6. Right? I go back. Do you agree with me that S, the sum, lives in here somewhere? Yeah. I'm hopping back and forth. I'm going here and then here and then here and then here and then here. Every single time, I'm actually like hopping over. That was fun. Hopping <laughs> over the sum, right? I'm like doing a little hopscotch. Boom. 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 Right? So I want to put my no, I know, I know. I have no regard for that at all. So we are always hopscotching over the actual value. And that's pretty crazy. So that's kind of the fundamental of what you're going to talk about now and how you can estimate the error of your guess. So the error formula says the sum. Subtract the real sum, subtract the number of terms you've added up, take the absolute value. And it's always going to be less than that b to the m plus 1. Now that, that means it's not the negative 1 oscillating part. The next, yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm saying, and I'll show you some examples with how this works. Okay. So. So the idea is, from here, let me erase these. Let me just do a, no, good ass. I, I, I love that you get me on board here. So I go from here to here, right? And now I'm going to go up to S3. And my real S lives in there somewhere. And the I'm going to go backwards. This is my a n plus one. And I could I could say this was um this was a half and this is a third, right? This distance is a third. I know that the difference between this number and this is less than a third. That's obvious. But I can do better than that. I can say it's less than the next term. Because the next term is going to go to the left of my s. So you want you want this to be smaller. So you you could say this is less than that, but a better error bound is the next term. So this, whatever this is, subtract this. This distance is always going to be less than that distance. That's what this means. Absolute value means distance. Yeah. Is the reason this is important is because you can't really evaluate it. You just have to find a close approximation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cosine is a convergent series, but it is transcendental number, so we don't have, um, we have to approximate. Yeah. You know, so it can't be written, for most of the values, it can't be written as a fraction of rational numbers, one half and one third. But, uh, sorry, it's like I'm on a plane, my ears keep popping, sorry. Okay, so now let me show you an example and then I'm going to stop. And then you guys will have a lot of time to work on your classwork. All right, so the example, I'm going to use the one in your packet. Prove, I don't really need this. So we're not going to use harmonic right now. We're going to use, I can erase this. So example, this is example one. Prove that this n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, 1 over n squared converges. And then I'm going to find the, um, an error bound. So, it's an alternating series test. I mean, an alternating series, so we can use the alternating series test. What's the first thing you should do for this? Back in your notes. Divergence test. Yay! You came to that. Thank you. Nice and loud. Wow. Thank you. That's why I what's my money. So, so we're going to do like a modified divergence test, right? You want to think about it like that. I'm going to put it in quotation marks. Yes. Whatever you need. So divergence test. So remember, we're calling this is our a sub n. I'm going to call this b sub n. So we're just going to look at that piece. All this test is contingent upon that. But the ironic thing is, once we know that this is true, we're going to disregard it. So now I have to take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared, which is 0, past the first level. Right. So part two, Ugh. What, do you, what, what do you guys want to do now? Always positive. So, so you have to prove that a, b sub n is is always greater than zero. And you know what? Do we put, like, do we have to say that, like, because it's squared, it's always going to be negative? Or do we just, like... You know, I would say just in a line, prove to me you understand. Domain is positive integers, squared, always positive. That's fine. 1 over n squared, always positive. Just like that. You don't even need this, but... Right? But don't we not even have to say that to, about the domain because that would be negative? That's right. So that's perfect. You could just do any value squared. One's po numerator is positive, divide by a positive term. Positive. Okay? So now, this is the hardest part about this test. We have to um, show that it's decreasing. So, de and you have to do this. You must. 
this test falls apart if you don't do this. So is I'm it, actually going to take the derivative. Is it eventually decreasing? Or? Eventually decreasing. Okay. But but you um, will, I think in your classwork and homework, they'll, they'll decrease right from the beginning. So I'm going to let f of x equal to b sub n. Yeah? So f of x equals x to the negative 2. Take the derivative. What's the derivative of that? What is it? Mm -hmm. And I'll just put it in the fraction. So here, you can say the domain is positive. Thus, new denominator is positive. And then this numerator is negative. Thus, it's true, right? These are this. The slope of the tangent line is always negative. So, um, and 0 is a critical point, but that's not my domain. So we can say, because um, the <coughs> derivative is always negative, the function is decreasing, is always decreasing. And you need to do that. It's a little hard to read. The derivative is always negative, f of x is always decreasing, thus my b sub n must always be decreasing too. So guess what? You do those three things, thus convergent. So I don't really have room there. I'll just write it here. Uh, thus, n equals 1 to infinity of my, my a sub n converges. And you can write by the alternating series test. Done. Those three pieces. I mean, in some ways, it's nice. You don't have to think of another series that's similar, right? You don't have to do that stuff. It seems so much harder than doing everything. You do. Well, do you guys want me to do an error example or not? Yes. Let me do an error example. There's one here, and then um, and then I'll let you guys get started. I know I'm going a long time. All right. Can I erase? Yeah. All right, so example one, part two, they ask. Oh, minus one. Oh. <laughs> you oh, okay. All right, good. All right, so now it says, if you want to calculate a partial sum within... 0.0001 of the actual. This is just right on your the actual sum. How many terms do you have to include? <laughs> there you go. How many terms must you include? I'm kind of writing it shorthand because it's in your your notes, right? It's in your packet. So um, we're going to use that formula. I think in the book maybe the S of S first doesn't matter. So this is my formula. Yeah. Now I'm just doing this to show you I don't want that negative one business. I don't want the negative one. Oh, so you define a to be the rule. Yeah, I don't I want um remember I did this, I said a sub n is the general term, negative one to the n times b sub n. I want to use this, I want positive. This has to be positive. Okay? So now well, all you guys do is say, well, this, can I write it as 1 over 10,000? Well, we can't solve for that. But look, this and this, we can solve for. This has to be less than that. All right, so it's kind of a, like you do a little bit of guess and check with this. We'll just we'll just say it's equal and see what happens. All right. So now you take your what was my was it one over i squared? Yeah. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. So now all you do is you remember here we want the n plus one term, so we plug in n plus one 
into our term, and it's 1 over n plus 1 squared equals, oops, 1 over, take the reciprocal of both, and then solve for n. And when you do that, I'm not going to do that now, but you get 99. Yeah, okay, done. <laughs> So I think um, I think that's all. So to get to satisfy this, to get a value within a ten thousandth of a degree of accuracy with close to your your actual sum, you have to sum up the first ninety nine terms. Okay. So that's it. Let you guys go. Have fun with it. It's Jenkins.